Wherever right. the, wherever there's love, there's God. Right. And that's why you'd be hard pressed to find a place where you won't find just a little bit of love. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Thomas Cartier. And I am Master V. Master V. And this here is Master F. Frank is in the house. He's in the studio with us today. Always happy to have him on board. <laughs> yes. The trio. The dynamic three. Um, It's Thursday. Holy Thursday. It's holy... Th- Every day this week has a nice little name <laughs> because it has a beautiful story. Wait, not a beautiful story. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, the st- every story, every biblical story is beautiful, but Holy Thursday is well, you today. Might, yeah, you might think that it's leading up to the crucifixion, yeah. but it's leading up to the resurrection. Ooh, it's all perspective. So Holy Thursday is when the Last Supper? Yes. Last Supper, folks. Right now, Jesus is at the table with his disciples and he is breaking bread. He's saying, this is my body. This is my blood. Oh, also, one of you will betray me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it is the Bible story that is replicated in churches across the world in a communion service. Yes. It is also depicted by Da Vinci in The Last Supper. Yes. Um, now, is there anything you're supposed to do on on Holy Thursday? I don't know. You know I think I mean? when I was young, we would go to church and they would give us bread. Oh, like, like yeah, I guess, I guess <laughs> when, when would be a better day to have communion? Yeah. Than on Holy Thursday. Yeah. But. So it was a uh, happy time because they were having a dinner party. Yeah. But it was also confusing time and Jesus was saying some com- Saying some confusing things he was. that only made sense later. Only made sense later. It, w- it was. It, w- it was great. They were breaking bread with Jesus, but he was saying, this is the last time we'll be breaking bread right. on this physical earth. Right. So that's Holy Thursday. Um, What else? We're coming off of Wacky Wednesday, headed, <laughs> <laughs> headed into Freaky Friday. Well... Friday is going to be hard tomorrow because, yeah, we usually have Festive Friday, but tomorrow's Good Friday, which is supposed to be um, solemn because mm-hmm. that is the crucifixion commemoration. Um, what, again, when I was young, grr, from 12 noon to 3 p.m., you were you were supposed to really not do anything. And like, um, so on Fridays, you fast for meat, but from 12 to 3, you weren't supposed to eat anything. So what happens after 3? Well, he died. It was like... 12 to 3 is, is the walk and the... I think 12 to 3 is hanging on the cross. Three hours on the cross. Yeah. Got it. And so it was supposed to be the most... I and I, I remember like bells ringing at 3, mm-hmm. church bells, stuff like that. Um, I lived in a Norman Rockwell painting. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a row home in Philadelphia. There, yeah. was, there was a chapel and they ring yeah. the bell. Um, well, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll do something. We'll have a Faithful Friday. Oh, I like it. There's always a way to spin it. But guess what, guys? It's not Faithful Friday just yet. Just quite yet. Today is, drumroll please. It's Walkthrough Thursday. Roll the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause Walkthrough Wednesday just begun. All right, guys, it is walk through Thursday, and I know what you're thinking. You're like, Spencer, Master V, what are you going to talk about? I thought walk through Thursday was you guys walking through the 23rd Psalm. No, no, you'd be wrong. Walk through Thursday is where we find Bible stories, verses, pages, and we go through it. We go through it line by line, word by word, and yes, the chapter of the 23rd Psalm has came to a close last week but when one door closes what another verse opens another verse opens we'll always remember though that our first walk through was the 23rd psalm because it has walk through in the psalm oh yeah walk through 
the Valley of the Shadow of Death, but let's not even go any further in the 23rd Psalm, because today, by popular demand, by our favorite subscriber, we are going to talk about a specific verse, one of the greatest verses. I feel like every verse is one of the greatest verses. <laughs> That's true. And we are talking about 1 John 4, 7 to 8, line 7 to line to 8. I don't know how to say it, but do you want to say it? Um, how about you read in one version and I'll read in the other version? All right. So here we got our we got our notes with us today. We're professionals. We've been doing this a long time. So in front of me, I have I'm going to read the King James version because sure. I just I feel like I'm sort of like King James esque. Well, the Christian meme king. The Christian meme king. I never even put the two things together. And then you'll read the new international version. Because I'm, I'm new and international. <laughs> You're comprehensive. You're relatable. You're more international than I am now that I think of it, but it's okay. <laughs> Let me just have my King James version. Yeah. I'll be the new Irish version. We don't even have to change the letters. <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth God, for God is love. Yeah, we might need the, the new international version on that one. Okay, the new international version. So I'm guessing these are letters that were written because this one, this one starts, dear friends. You know what I mean? Was it one of those situations? You know the letters like from Paul and stuff? Yeah, um, Maybe this is... I don't have the full verse in front of me. That's but... fine. So it says, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. You know what? I'm so I didn't even do a pre-screening of what this verse was, but I'm so happy that this is, is the verse we're talking about. Because, guys, you can you can fact check me on this. Since the beginning, I told you, I said, if you read the entire Bible, like a lot of people will bring out a lot of individual things. But I'm, if you just turn the Bible into a bowl of soup, into a pot of soup and melt it all down, what does it boil down to? That's what people want to know. I yeah. Say, and I say I can boil it down to a sentence and I can boil it down to a word. The sentence I always say is love your neighbor. And the word is love. Yeah. And I think this passage sums up the Bible in its entirety. Okay. I think it sums up the Bible. And let me read it again. Okay. All right, guys. If, if anyone, you guys like, oh, read the Bible. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot of words. Um, I don't have the time. I'm a busy person. I'm going to sum up the Bible for you right now. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. You're done. I just read you the Bible. You're done. Yeah. That's what I think. And I would like if people listening would open their minds. Open their minds. Okay? Open your minds. Open your minds. Because people are triggered whether they know it or not. So when you say, I have a Bible verse for you. I'm going yeah. to read you something something from the Bible. Um, they kind of get scared. <laughs> I even, I even, sorry to cut you no, off, but I even, I even think about it because you know us. We talk about anything. We have a good time. It's a party in this podcast, yeah. and sometimes these walk through Thursdays worry me, and I'm like, are we pushing away the? Are we pushing away the audience that we want? Because I know how I feel when I when I hear right. Come to our Bible study. It's like, I'm as Christian as the next Christian, right. but it, it can be a lot. It can be a lot. It can be dry. Now, what? but if you were to, um, if it was, think of, think you're on Instagram or you're, you know, in social media, or you just see something somewhere, a billboard, and you see a quote, a phrase, um, and at the end of the words that you read, it could say Shakespeare, it could say Rumi. It could say Martin Luther King yeah. and people, oh, okay, like that I can digest that. Hey, hey, that's a cool statement. I agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, that's something that, yeah, you know what? I would like to bookmark that or whatever. And the, you know, sometimes the knee jerk reaction of, 
uh, Bible verse. So I, the reason I said if people would have an open mind, read what you just read or, or listen to what you just read and just forget that it says at the end, 1 John 4 colon 7 dash 8. If I told you that somebody else said it, you'd be like, you know what? I agree. I think. What do you think? Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, how many people disagree with? Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Or so, so a non non Christian or non non Bible reader, right? Will say, oh, I don't want to hear that scripture. No. But if if Spencer was walking down the street, or if I was at if I was at a kickback, and I'm just like, you know what, guys? You know what, friends? Why don't we just love each other? Right. You know, love comes from God. I think. Every I shouldn't say I think. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. And knows, I don't know if I would say this at all at a party, but uh, <laughs> whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Do you know? Like the guy with the cardboard sign, you know, like, oh, that, what did he, what does it say? And okay, what do I, how do I feel about it? So just be with an open mind. And with an open mind? Don't feel. And an empty stomach? That I cuisine. I'm the Bible teacher and you have to learn or remember or you know agree to it because the words what's wrong with the words these words are really good <laughs> all right let's stop caveating about the bible verses and let's get into this one all right line by line word by word all right so um which one are we doing though the new we're inter- doing new international. new international the king james version is uh it's too too flowy we'll, too flowery we'll, yeah we'll, we'll spend the 30 minutes just dissecting the language all right so it's too flowery um so very very first thing like i said says dear friends dear friends um therefore it's not like i just said it's not teacher student it's not i'm you know uh, no, teaching is still too much of a nice word like lecturing i'm yeah. not lecturing you I'm, I'm about to lecture you so you sit down i'm gonna be, be, berate you this is dear friends this is we're all friends here and yeah. you know what i gotta tell you something that you're going to want to hear, not because I'm forcing it on you or because you don't. I literally know you're going to want to hear this. Yeah. And then if if you want, we're going to transition right into the next line to say it's not a lecture where it's let us love one another. It's not, hey, guys, love one another. Right. It's not this teacher telling. It's he's part. It, 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 John here is having the revelation himself. Right. Us. And he's like. Hey, guys, let us, we're a group. Let us go love one another. Right. And um, and that's, you know, we, we have like five more words after that for that first period. But if we just are and staying in the first part for a second, dear friends, let us love one another. And we're back to unconditional love. Unconditional love. Because it's, it's saying we're friends and we're going to love one another. Not who deserves the love. Who is who am I not talking to? Yeah. It is just coming out of the gate with an unconditional love for each other. Yes. Now, um, you get the for love comes from God. Okay. Now actually, everyone who loves and has been born of We had a podcast yesterday, guys. Yeah. We had a podcast where we talked about atheists. We went on this whole thing about, yeah. we don't know Bible verses, but we're like, we said we truly believe that good atheists and good anyone of any faith can mm-hmm. go to heaven because people who live good lives are living through God. Right. And we we could have, this could have been our support, one verse on, on, the, on, like, on the whole thing yesterday. We could have talked 30 minutes about this verse and then that this would have proved our argument. Right. So I'm going to read the, what makes you think of that. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Let me rephrase that. Everyone who loves, it doesn't say everyone who makes this claim, everyone Decision. who does this thing. Right. It's all about love. Everyone who love has been born of God and knows God. No matter what what faith you are, it's everyone who loves. Right. Whoever does not love does not know God. And and we talked about that in the other verse yesterday where we said, um, where God said, you can say, Lord, Lord, all you want. Like, you right. weren't living th- through me. And what, what was he about? Love. Because whoever does not love 
does not know God because God is love. It's right there in black and white, guys. I mean, that's what it's about. If you want to be a follower of God, it's love. When you feel love in your body and you're a believer, that is, that's, what, that's what God is. Yeah. Anyone who says, I'm the biggest Christian and they have hatred in their heart, it's like, you're, a, you're, you're far from God. Right. Anyone who, of any faith, who has love as a Christian, we, from these verses, we, we have to understand that they've got God inside them. Right. When, when you see love, you're, you're seeing God. I'm speaking to somebody. Yeah. Because if also, if you say, um, I don't know God. Yeah. If someone says to you, like, you know, can you talk to me about God? Or, um, or if someone says to you, can I talk to you about God? I need to learn about God. Yeah. I don't know it. I can't speak on it. I'm unfamiliar with it. Little do they know that they do know God because they know love. They know love. Uh, my per people have a lot of um of questions of what is the purpose of life. They say, "What is the purpose of life, Spencer?" And I truly think it's like with God being love, we are vessels of love, and we're put on earth to love. Like that is the the demon quality. I don't. I, I think everything else melts away. Mm-hmm. Of you said this, you believed in that. I think it all boils down to love, and that's why we're on this in this balanced world, in this chaotic world. Even you yeah. know, yeah, we're we're not in a giver society. You know, I love bringing it up. I love bringing it up. <laughs> but we're in this chaotic world, and the one thing you always see through all of the worst times, tragic events, is the the shining thing that comes out of it is people coming together yeah. it's this love it, and that is where you see that god's always there because right. god is love wherever right. that wherever there's love there's god right and that's why you'd be hard pressed to find a place where you won't find just a little bit of love yes and i would even go so far as to say love is absolutely everywhere on the earth that he created on, f- with the children he created even if we can't see it yeah. So you might say that there's no love in, in like you'll see someplace and you go, this is a terrible place. Like think of maybe the detention um, holding centers. <laughs> uh, I thought you meant like just detention. There is detention. A, detention is a, lo- is a loveless <laughs> land. No, like the people talk about the holding centers yeah. for, the, for the immigrants. You know, there's no love there. Um, well, there is because I'm sure there's lots of very um, heartwarming stories that are happening within yeah amongst you know so there's yeah it's just love in, even in, if you in, don't see in it everywhere and, and you know um if you read if you read books about the holocaust and, and you know Anne frank then the person who was right was hiding her in, in slavery you had marriages going on and stuff and it was like we use the word hope a lot like especially in right. the holocaust where it's like i never lost hope but there's also this i've never lost the ability to love right love those around me right and have have love and that's when you're like when god's always with you right that's what we're talking about because god always loves us so at the very least there's that love yeah so if you say like i don't love myself Mm -hmm. or my parents don't love me you know well you're loved by god yeah you know and also people forget that you're loved by total strangers yeah. Total strangers. So many times people are unaware that the effect they have on others in any way, even if you're not on social media, it could just be someone you pass in a store. Like you're loved regardless if you know it. Yeah. You know, it's like being in a coma and you don't know what's going on. Does that mean the whole world is in a coma with you? No. Yeah. And you, I know you guys might say, hey, Spencer, you get a little angry at some of these people online on on the reddit forums fellow christians who attack and, and that genuinely <laughs> sounds like a show <laughs> <laughs> christians who attack fellow christians who attack that yeah, that's my biggest qualm i never fight beliefs like if someone even in politics even if someone has a different belief that's fine like i, I know I'm, I'm not gonna have the same obviously there's a, a million religions yeah that I, and i'm a christian there's things like, oh, well, I believe in this, you believe in mm-hmm. that. But what I can't stand 
in in with fellow Christianity in you know politics is when hatred is is brought into the mix. Right. Is and that's why when I see the condemnation of other yes. people, yes, and it's like when these people are truly hating the way other people are living, right? Hating this, and I'm like, it's not whatever that person doing that it's pulling someone away from God. Your own hatred, right. like. Your own hatred is pulling you away from God when that's the sole thing that you're trying to defend. And you don't understand, but Jesus showed us where he was like, I'll go and touch hands with the lepers. He was like, the love is, is, is what's important. Yes, it is hard to really love everything. Uh, yeah, I, I go through my day and I can't say I, I, I love, but... right. Yeah, but it's like for me because no, but I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't saying that to 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 <laughs> challenge you. I was saying, but that is the goal. That is the goal. Yeah. And, and once well, I always say it because I am so far from perfect, it is insane. Not true. Um, but I I always say this. I always say a lot of things. Is I try to be honest with myself, and I acknowledge, and I acknowledge so. Do I get snappy on maybe like when I'm driving and then I'm like, I could kill this guy in front of me. Uh, <laughs> or if, if, if I'm introduced to a new type of, of you know, a, a, the new generation and they're like, we're going to start wearing our pants this way. And then I'm like, ready to be like, really? that's, that's wrong. I hate <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I always try to remember that it's all about love and acceptance. Yeah. And, and so even if you keep failing as long as your your mission is to always remind yourself i am like it's about love um how's the, the one verse go of like help me with the things i don't understand oh yeah i don't know um, if that has anything to do with it but i just thought about the word like, un, for the things i don't understand Oh yeah, except the things. That I think I, it's an AA quote. It is. It's the pr- it's the it's the um serenity prayer. Yeah. How does it go? It is um Lord help me to change the things. It's been a while since you've been to AA. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> Frank, he, he should let us know. Yeah, Frank. If so, he ever actually went to a meeting. Quiet. Except the things I no no except is the very last part. Ugh. No Ch- change no the, things the very can... last part is is um and the wisdom to know the difference. That's right. So Lord, give me the serenity to change the things I can, accept the things I cannot, and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah. Right. I don't know how that applies. Well, but... anyways, um, people justify hating certain things, so they'll say, uh, "I hate sin." And yeah. I and I hate the sinner, so the challenge is to not hate the sin or yeah. the sinner. Um, and I mentioned Martin Luther King earlier, but I believe he's the one that said you can't drive out darkness with darkness. Yeah. You have to drive out darkness with light. So for people like like I said, they feel justified to say, "Well, I do hate the person who killed all the babies." Yeah, you know. Um, no, challenge yourself to love them it's more powerful it's more powerful against whatever it is that you are perceiving is dark yeah i mean yeah and i know we bring it up like every podcast but in the the cast the first stone story jesus never said what are you doing this this woman's not a sinner right like he he never said you guys are 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 falsely accusing her he even told her he said go and sin no more but he was tell he was saying them like you he loved her still right, right. no matter what she did they were th- they were ready to throw stones at her but she sinned like I hate sin and I'm going to eliminate it from the root right and then he's like that's that's not what you do like right right so um, if you want to be a person who is not of darkness. You want to get rid of hate and judgment. Yeah. And if you get rid of hate and judgment, you will be filled with love and acceptance. Why people are afraid of loving and accepting um, others, I don't know. Because they'll say, well, God said this and God said that and the Bible says this. Okay, sure it does. But it also says, like you said, 
when it's completely um, concentrated yeah. down. Love. So mm-hmm. if you don't know what we should do, I'm guessing you should do the, the, the thing that's the kernel, the thing that is left, the thing that is the strongest. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, these like really like <laughs> this is obviously a minority, but the Christians that they, they march with signs and, and they say, yeah. God hates gays yeah, and, yeah. and things like this. And then God hates baby killers. But right here, I don't have my glasses on, but <laughs> it, I think what it's saying is everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Yeah, you're all saying God is hating. I don't want to judge. But, but you, know, you know what but, it is? You know what it is? It's because it's because. We live in a balanced world and, and we all have, we have the ability to hate. Mm-hmm. And, and when we get angry and we have hate in our hearts, we try to blame others. Right. And we try to say, well, no, I, like they're wrong. And that's where my hate's coming from. And it's like, your hate's coming from you and you can easily change it. Like, right. Without the world changing, you can be a hateful person and everything in life just really gets under your skin, but you're making the choice to hate it. Right. Like, you can live a life of love. I'm not telling you to change your beliefs on anything. You can believe everything you're saying, and that is, goes. Amen. To, and that goes to the serenity prayer and um, the uh, ability to accept the things I I, I cannot change. Right. The wisdoms know the difference. Right. And you can live. It's because I feel like a lot of people think that it's like, but I'm not okay with it. It's like don't. No one's telling you change your beliefs to this. We're telling right. you to love that person. We're right. not telling you to say. Okay, I changed my views of, of what I believe. We're telling you to love that person even though they don't believe what you're believing. Right. Because when we're not telling you, it's God that's telling you. Um, in yesterday's podcast, you compared the people of Earth to siblings. We're all siblings with one another. Brothers and sisters just goofing off. Yeah. And um, if you think of it that way, it's easier to understand. So... Um, if you have somebody who is doing something that most people would find inappropriate or, you know, not not of the light, then the other person starts to attack them, mm. okay, and c- accuse them and want to change them and want to out them. Okay, so when you have children and say one is acting up and giving trouble and, and, and I as the parent, I want to take care of this one. Yeah. The worst thing is when the sibling wants to get involved and starts fighting with this guy and you're like you are making everything so much more (laughs) yeah you're making everything so hard for me the parent but but i'm good and i know that he's bad that's awesome so (laughs) be a good child and move away from this situation and i the father or mother the parent you know the the over one will deal with this person myself yeah and the parent never asks the you know hey i'm gonna need help with this one they don't do it so if you just think of again we're children of god and we're siblings please don't interfere yeah exactly and and you know uh, obviously siblings aren't all perfect but the ideal thing Mm -hmm. would be no matter what your sibling does you might be you know the bookworm sibling and you see your 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 brother sneaking out do you start to hate him i hate him it's like no, you you don't sneak out. You still love your brother, right? And then it's not up to you. Don't be a snitch, right? And if and let's continue this analogy for thirty more seconds. Let's continue this analogy to say, like you just said. So I am I am uh, abiding by the rules, and I'm staying in the house because it's past curfew. I see my sibling climbing out the window. So if you want to say. And what someone might say, well, I wanted to keep him safe. So I need to tell. Okay, tell. And this is how you tell. You can pray for that person because we're siblings and God is above us. And if you feel, and people always say that, you know, like, I'll pray for you. But they say it in, um, I mean, when they say it as you're a bad person, I'll pray for you. Like, yeah, they're using it, and 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 you know they're not. And and what are you praying for their yeah. demise? Yeah, you know what these people are doing? They see their siblings sneak out, and they lock the windows and doors, and says, "Well, they snuck out. Now they're out of the house." Right. And then if that kid comes home and sleeps in the grass, 
And guess who that parent's going to get mad at when, right. <laughs> when they right. wake up? Right. Why would you lock your brother out? I'll deal with him, but why would you lock him out of the house? Right. <laughs> and the Bible is full of stories of Jesus, of God, of message, of the messengers, of all the um, prophets telling us to mind our own business. There's so many that yeah. I like, I'm not even going to start to pull them up. Yeah. There's so many that say, mind your own business. Yeah. Mind your own business and love. Is that, guys, is that so hard? Just mind your own business and love. And then that's it. You're set. You're actually you're set. You're helping you. You're helping them. You know, you're doing everyone a favor and you're contributing in an extremely positive way. So what is the argument? Yeah. You're not wrong, but you're right. So that was John 4, John, or 1 John 4, 7 to 8. Actually, it's a great verse. I mean, like I said, if you if you want to spark notes on the Bible, there you go. Too long to get tattooed, but maybe you could just you can do on your ribs. God is love. The whole thing? Yeah, on your ribs. Like in the script. All right, guys. Um, Thank you for coming to another walk through Thursday. It was exciting. Tomorrow is Good Friday, which is going to be Faithful Friday. And we're going to talk about maybe just Good Friday. I don't know yet. And if somebody else wants to ask for... A, yes, um, we 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 always take submissions for walk through Thursday. Right. If there's a Bible verse, you're like, hey, we want Crook and Crow to go through this line by line, word for word. We'll do it. But next week we're going to be reading Put Matthew. That down. You got all scribbles on the back. Next week we're going to be reading Matthew seven twenty one to twenty three, and that'll be on April eighth. But until then, check out everything else we do. Like, subscribe, and don't share. But go and, and love somebody. Break bread. Go go and break <laughs> bread. Love everyone around you. Peace.